Okay, I got a cherry burl here I've been letting dry. A friend of mine, Linda Catrier, gave it to me. Gave me two of them. I've already turned the other one. It was dead on stump. I've been letting this one dry. It showed about 14% moisture content. I don't know if it's going to crack or not. Uh, the first thing when you do doing one like this is figuring out which way to turn it. And I've been standing here looking at this for 30 minutes, trying to figure out where I'm going to split it to make two balls out of it. I want a, I want a natural edge. I may end up pouring some of this in epoxy, turning the outside and then putting epoxy on it uh, because it does have some dirty places in it, uh, which is characteristic of burl. It's got a lot of crevices in it. I don't know if they're going to hold up or not. I want to save some of this as I have in the past. I put up a picture of one that I've done in the past that turned out great. I did four of them out of another burl just like this. No issues, but it, in wood turning, you don't never know what kind of issue you're going to have. I'm going to take this over on the bandsaw and probably look at it 30 more minutes before I run it through the bandsaw. And when I get the blank halved, I'll bring it. We'll look at it. I'm going to check the moisture content in the middle and see where I'm at. 14% is a lot, but I've turned them. These burls don't, sometimes to me, don't seem like they're cracking as bad as they are. Like I say, I'm going to check the moisture content. If it's not dry enough, we'll revisit this later. Okay, definitely too wet, but I think I'm going to turn one of them anyway. The easiest way i found to uh, to get you around so you don't have to do so much cut is to cut. I've got several pieces of plywood over here on the wall that quarter inch plywood in circles and I just take find the approximate center and drive a screw in it right there just enough to hold it and then I take the bandsaw and round it out and it just saves a whole lot of rough turning. Okay what I've done here is take my phosphor bit on a drill press Set my depth gauge and made me a place for my faceplate. It is real punky down in there. I hope it holds. I did a little experiment here a while back on these live edges, and this I really want to keep this live edge. And it's no guarantee, but what I've done on a couple of them, I take this shellac. I'm not trying to finish it. I'm trying to make it sticky so it sticks, especially that transition between bark and wood and I'm gonna let it just soak in and I go ahead and start turning it but uh, it's worth a shot and I, I have done it before and I had a piece of cherry that uh, was same out of the same piece same dryness uh, and I did it and I held it, I held it on there and put three or four coats, and I probably will on this. Especially if you're turning something like this, it's going to be out of balance. I, I like to use the tailstock support. I mean, you can't use it all the way, but you can use it most of the way. Okay, this is a one-way sharpening system. This is Wolverine. I don't know of any better way you can sharpen, and I sharpened for a living. I sharpened saws and things, and I used to use just the rest to sharpen them, and I thought I was really good, and people brought their tools to me for me to sharpen. I got to seeing this on YouTube, bought it. Sharpened. I got a 180 grit CBN wheel, which is mid-range. Uh, from what I've seen, and I, I saw it on YouTube, they said if you're going to buy one grip, buy the 180. That's what I bought, and it, I think it's all you need. It doesn't take much off. You have to get used to it. So if there's a better sharpening system, I don't know what it is. It's probably some just as good. Just uh, If you don't know what to buy, buy this. Follow the setup. Good instructions. They don't pay me anything to say this, but can't do better. You probably can't turn this very fast. Get it up to speed and it's wobbling. Sometimes you go right past it. 
just like that and it evens out. I'm at 615. That's probably all I'm going to try for now. 5 8 inch bowl gouge. Starting with a 40 degree angle. Everybody has different opinions on the angle. If you're trying to get keep the bark on, don't push that bark off. If you come in here like this, you're going to be pushing it off. So you want to go back in. I like that, but to get a smaller bottom on them. I just have to cut some of that off. I don't want to. I'm going to go back to my six. I'm at seven. Put it around. 900 RPMs. You can see the difference from six to 900 RPMs. You got to get it in round for it. Some of these pieces are naturally heavier on one side than the other. So, you never get them to where they're perfectly round and you have to turn at a lower speed. We're going to go back to our... Ooh, that one a piece. 920 RPMs. We'll work on this top a little bit. Small cut. A regular bowl, I would not be cutting it off that much. Boy, am I loving that! I would like to turn it natural, leave all these bark inclusions in it. That's just a good part of the burl. This is not going to be about design, so I'm probably not going to cut a lot more. I'm gonna cut a little off the bottom. I'm not going to scrape that bark. I'm going to sand it. Stop before I get to the bark. Watch that line. You keep that line moving, that means you're cutting so you don't have a start and a stop. See what that looks like? You could come in here and fill all these things with epoxy, but it looks great to me. Okay, gonna do a little sanding. You don't have to do a lot of rough sanding here because it's pretty smooth. Start off with 150 grit. A lot of different ways of sand. You can sand with your hand up there or whatever, but I like power sanding. I don't like any sanding. I like the turning part. <laughs> I can't see any T 
tool mark. We're going to reverse this and we'll hit it a little bit with this 150. And you may not can see it, but you see a lot of sawdust coming off compared to when I turned it around. That's because when you sand in one direction, the fibers are, are, are raising up where they're actually laying down. When you reverse it, it picks them back up and knocks them off. Now, everybody doesn't have a reversible lay. You can also wet this and do that. Or you can just wait on your sanding sealer. Put your sanding sealer on it and it raises the ground. It's, uh, it's a sealer, but one of the main things is it makes that grain stand up where you can knock it off. Down in the voids real good. There's a lot of different finishes and a lot of different sanding sealers and everything you use. This shellac's pretty inexpensive and it works really good for me. I got every color in the rainbow there. As I've shown you before, I've got a little drawing on the wall over here of the size of my chuck. And that way you don't have to set everything every time and figure it out or measure it. So you just take your chuck size, draw it on there, and I usually go a little smaller. So I've got it set. And bring it. You see some little lines on there. You touch the right side, don't touch the other side. Just right. So that's the size of my chuck. I'm actually a little bit smaller because I don't want to look too far. Take the part and tool. Okay, I saw a post the other day on my Facebook wood turning page about reversing into the taking it, turn it around, and it wobbling. What I always do, I, I bring my tailstock, my live center up to my chuck. I have this just snug, loosen it up. It's gonna be some hard turning in a little while, so I want it very tight, and I got a solid grip. So, if you do this, you turn your lathe on. It's not wobbling now. It should not wobble very little bit when you turn it around. Very we got the bowl reversed and we're gonna drill a hole through it. Save a little turning. You don't wanna drill real fast. I usually go somewhere between five and 700 RPMs. Quarter the wood. This is real funky in the center. To get to the bottom. And you see people holding this this chuck here and I figured out a long time ago if you if you help hold it a little bit to keep from spinning it doesn't doesn't get started spinning and ruin your chuck. Because this is gonna be a little hard to turn off camera I want tailstock support for a while 
it's off camera. I did me a little jig here to go in here. Just a little bit smaller than my tail stock support. Plus, it's going to give me, I don't have a tail stock extension. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to run my tail stock all the way out. That's all the way out. Back in just a little bit. And I made an extension and I got the tail stock support up in that hole. Now I've got a little more room to work. And I've got my tail stock support. Because I know this is probably going to be a bouncy ride. And I don't want to take too big a chunks out of here because of me leaving a lot of it. So I'm going to use a 3 8 inch bowl gouge. You're turning about 800 RPMs. carbide tool just chip away at it a little bit look at the rim again Hey, I just don't want to go any thinner up top because I'm afraid I will lose some of this. May still lose it. 1450 RPMs. The 386 bowl gouge. Easy wood tool. It's a hollowing tool. Uh, it's set your tool rest the right distance so the flat, it's got a flat side. You set it, it's got a, it's got a tag on the side that shows you the limits of it. And you're not used to pulling your tool rest out that far. Much thinner I would have started taking that bark off and that is my main thing keep that bark on about 1300 rpms vibration you're hearing that's from the different wood you got some air in there you've got some bark inclusions 
We got some solid wood.
a little bit more on the bottom. Smooth it. Okay, I gotta go back to my hollow one too. Too deep, too much vibration. It's not deep enough. sanding pads, I just use them for a backer, keep them burning my hand. Pretty natural piece. I think we're gonna stop sanding there. And the next step, we'll be putting on a cut of shellac. I'm not gonna bore you watching me finish this whole thing. Just put that shellac in there, pretty thick coat, because we're gonna sand between coats and coat everything, including the bark, especially the bark. Get it down in there. Turn nice and dark. Okay, we're going to let it dry for 30 minutes or so, and we'll be back. Sand it, put another coat on it. I might show you a little bit of it. Okay, we've got two coats of shellac. I've already put a little bit of OB shine juice on it. I'm going to put my last coat of OB shine juice. I've got my little backer pad here, so I want to get my fingers in the hole. Thought it was a good idea. You want to get up some heat there if you can. I'll give you that shine. Hope y'all have enjoyed this video. If you watch this video, I'd like you to give me a thumbs up or a thumbs down if you don't like it. Subscribe to our channel. It helps our algorithms. Uh, we just started a while back. We've got one video on there that's already had 1.4 thousand views uh, on a jig to use for turning it inside out to make it a lot easier than anything I've ever seen. I just fought uh, it up one day and got it out and it worked. I think that looks pretty good once I dig all the paper tiles out of it. This has got to be one of the prettiest pieces of wood that I have ever seen. It's hard to turn. I had to leave the walls very thick because the bark inclusions went nearly all the way to the bottom. Uh, if you like this video, give us a thumbs up. Please subscribe to our channel. We'll have more videos coming later. I have the other half of this piece that I'm gonna turn next. Thanks for watching and God bless.